pathway in the nervous system. The endocrine system and nervous systems are the two long distance communication systems in your body. The nervous system is a quick on, quick off. So you touch something hard, you move your hand back. So that's very quickly. Endocrine system is a slow on, slow off. They they release a, the hormone, the chemical molecules. It take a while to work, it take a while to slow down. Your nervous system can be divided into the central and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. The nervous system includes the nerve, a bundle of those, uh, we call them axons, together we call them nerves, and also cluster of cells in the peripheral nervous system, we call them ganglia. The nervous system is huge. Start from you see the object, you see the food, and the information go from your uh, five senses and transfer them into the electrical signal and start from here. That's the nervous system. So you have a sensory input. It will go to your integrating center, usually your brain, sometimes your spinal cord. You have the interneuron and you decide to grab the food. You need to have the motor neuron go out until you reach the skeletal muscle. So from here to here to here, the whole nervous system. And that's why the nervous system is a big topic. This slide shows you the same concept. You have the sensory input from your outside, somatic sensory, or visceral sense. That's when your appendix hurt, or stomach hurt, or your toe, your ligaments, from the visceral, that's from the inside. And the signal will go through your sensory neural, go to your integrating center, and you decide to do something, you are gonna have a motor neuron, control your somatic nervous system, control your muscle. And also you have the autonomic nervous system. They uh, can be divided into the sympathetic, parasympathetic. They control your inner organ and, and this client. So all this part, that's your nervous system. And let's talk about this part first, called the autonomic nervous system. Your autonomic nervous system can be divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic, we call the fight or flight. That's when you see a bear coming towards you. This system will be activated. It will act your whole body and to increase your chance to survive. Apparently, you could not stay in this state for too long, so you need this one to balance parasympathetic nervous system. This system is called the rest and digest. This after you run away from the bear or you uh, kill the bear and you have plenty of meat. You think, what am I supposed to cook? So that's when this system get activated. Their function is rest and digest. The Autonomic nervous system, you found they come from the, still come from the brain, or more original brain area. And they control those visceral organs, uh, your smooth muscle, your endocrine gland, and your en uh, cardiac muscle, your heart. Uh, adipose, they need to turn those fat into energy so your muscle can work. So these are all autonomic nervous system. And autonomic nervous system can be divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Let's see how they control. They control your whole body. Sympathetic usually come from the thoracic to the lumbar area, from the spinal cord. They will reach the sympathetic ganglia. From the sympathetic ganglia, you have the second neuron, touch, innervate your whole body. Their function, think about uh, you're fighting the bear. So, this system will be activated and it will make your pupil dilate so you will see more light. It will decrease your saliva production and that's when you're nervous you have the dry mouth because this is for long-term survival. It will increase your uh, cardiovascular, your heart rate, your respiratory rate to bring more oxygen to your body. It will inhibit the digestive functions because this is for long-term survival. So that's sympathetic function. And let's look at the parasympathetic. Parasympathetic starts from the cervical and sacrum, so the beginning and the end. And beginning part including the brain stem. So the, the cranial nerves, the nerves come from your uh, brain stem. 
cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, 10, they are, they are parasympathetic, and the sacrum part. They reach the ganglia, from the ganglia reach the target, and you found they innervate the same organs, but different function. So they will constrict the pupil, they will increase the saliva production, they will in decrease the heart rate, decrease the respiratory rate, it will activate your digestive function. So that's the parasympathetic. And this, these two systems need to be balanced. They're like yin and yang, they need to be balanced. And this one is somatic. So uh, we talk about this in the muscle part. Start from your brain, it will go to control your skeletal muscle so you're able to move. And let's start from the cell part. In your brain, you have two kinds of cells, neurons and neuroglia. You have a hundred billions of neurons. They are able to uh, generate electrical signal. They have very high metabolic rate, so your brain only weighs about 3% of your body weight. It takes about 10 to 15% of your blood flow, so it takes a lot of energy. And that's these neurons. Extremely longevity, so if you are 20 years old, your neuron is actually 20 years old. And when you turn 80, they're 80 years old. So uh, most of the neurons, they don't divide. In the 21st century, we only find uh, a few brain areas, like your uh, hippocampus, that's the areas associated with memory. They have neurogenesis, the cell divide. Other brain areas, those neurons, most of them, they don't divide. So take good care of your brain, because these neurons, uh, if they die, they die. And you actually have 10 times more neuroglia. These neuroglia are supportive cells. They, they, they support the neurons. So like this picture, this is the, the, uh, the brain, this is the neuron. And this does, they are the nuclei of the neuroglia. So you actually have 10 times more neuroglia. And we will talk about those six different kind of neuroglia. They have different supportive function. And let's look at look at the neuron uh, cell structure. So this is a neuron. Neurons have the nucleus, uh, have the mitochondria. Basically, all cells have it. Let's look at some specific structure. Neurons have a lot of finger. This finger is called a dendrite. And the neuron is going to form the neural network with other neurons. So these dendrites are where they receive the input. So the other neuron will come here and innovate these dendrites. And this part is the output. This area, when the cell body connect with the arm, the arm called the exon. This is called the exon helix. Today we will talk about this area. That's where those action potential, those electrical signal is generated. From the exon helix, it will go through the whole exon. Exon is like the arm. It can extend out, and it will innovate. Most of them innovate the dendrites of other neurons. But this one, this is the motor neuron. So it will actually innovate skeletal muscle. So we talk about this part in previous chapter. And the innovation part is called the synapse or synaptic terminal. Neurons can be put into different uh, categories based on the structure. You have the unipolar, multipolar, and bipolar. So most of neurons that are multipolar, they have a lot of dendrites and one exon. If they have one dendrite, one exon, this is called the unipolar or bipolar. So one input, one output. And the difference between the bipolar and unipolar is bipolar, the cell body stays, still stay in, in the center. Unipolar, they push to the, to, the, to the side. So both of them look like they're very good at transducting signal. And we do find them in the sensory system, like in your eyes, in your retina, you have the bipolar cells. Their job is to send the signal from your photoreceptor and to the ganglia cells. And your unipolar cells you find in your uh, sensory system, your somatosensory, your body sensation. And it pick up the, the sensation from your skin and send it to your spinal cord. And most brains, you have those multipolar neurons. And the neurons can also be put into different categories based on their function. If their function is to send the information in, we call them sensory neuron. And the motor neuron, they send the information out to control skeletal muscle. And in between, we call them interneuron. So most of the neurons in your brain, we call them interneuron. 
and these slides tell you, okay, this one is the sensory neuron. So they're, they're responsible for the sensory input. Interneuron, that's the in the brain, and the output one, that's the motor neuron. In your brain, you have 10 times more glia cells, and you have four of them in the central nervous system. You have two of them in the peripheral nervous system. So let's talk about their name and their function. The first one is called the astrocyte. Astrocyte, its function is from the blood-brain barrier. It will surround the capillary, make the capillary less leaky. So a lot of uh, bacteria, they won't be able to go to the brain because of the blood-brain barrier. That's astrocyte. The second one, oligodendrocyte. Its function is from the myelin. Myelin is the insulation structure outside of the the exome. So it's formed by oligodendrocyte. If you damage this, and you can make the signal won't be able to trans out, tra transform out, and it's a disease. Damage this is called the multiple sclerosis, and that's when the autoimmune your Im immune system uh, attack the oligodendrocyte, and there. The effect is motor impairment. So it's damaged in the nervous system but affect the, the motor motor function. Microglia, that's the uh, white blood cells, defense cells. Epidermal cells, that's the cells in your uh, ventricle, that's the uh, cavities, that's the, the inside your brain, you have those ventricles, empty space, and they fill with the liquid called cerebrospinal fluid. And epidermal cells, they produce cerebrospinal fluid. So here are these cells, astrocytes, if on the blood-brain barrier, you cover the capillary, make, it, make the capillary less leaky. And your brain is a pretty busy place. You have neuron, 100 billion of neuron, and you have 10 times more neuroglia cells. So this is the microglia, and they, will, they are the immune function to attack the bad guy. And this is the epidermal cells. They produce a cerebrospinal fluid. And this the oligodendrocyte. It covers the exon, so it creates a myelin in the central nervous system. And if you damage them, it's called a multiple sclerosis. And you have two of them in the peripheral nervous system. We have the satellite cells and Schwann cell. Schwann cell is like the oligodendrocyte in the central nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, you need a bigger one to cover those axon bundle. So they use the Schwann cell. And the satellite cells, their function is to support the ganglia. So the peripheral nervous system, you have cluster of cells in the peripheral nervous system, we call the ganglia. And the satellite cells, they support the ganglia. And the Schwann cells, they are the myelin in the peripheral nervous system. So these are the two cells in the peripheral nervous system. And these neurons, they form the pathway, send the information into the brain, and send the information out. So if they send in, they call it ascending, ascending pathway from the peripheral to the brain. And if your brain wants to control something, they use the descending pathway. Descending is from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscle. Okay, let's take a short break.